Cura 5.0 was released based on the Arachne engine, and it's got an amazing feature that it can adjust the flow to adjust the line width and fill tiny gaps. Actually makes prints faster and somewhat better, but it also found a problem that I had on this printer right here. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also brought to you by PCBWay.com, a great place to get low-cost circuit boards and also low-cost assembly services, all from one place, PCBWay.com. Cura 5.0 was released this week based on the Arachne engine. It's still in beta, but it's got some nice features. Let's take a look at one that helped me solve a problem on my 3D printer. Here's a close-up of a CHEP cube sliced in Cura 4.13, these two yellow lines at the top had a gap between them, so it fills it with little strips of filament. With the Cura 5.0 Beta, the algorithm adjusts the line width, or basically the flow, so those lines come out thicker and fill in that gap. So as usual, I tried to test the CHEP cube with the slicer. I always use this as a base, and I wanted to make sure the seam was in the corner. So I put it in the corner, and after I sliced it, you can see here, it's right here next to the CHEP. If I click on line type, you can see that the starts is white, which is the start of a new layer, and that's what forms the seam. I tested this on the Ender 2 Pro, and look what I got. These bumps, all in the corner where the seam should have been. These really, really ugly bumps. I'm like, this is crazy, I've never seen this before. So I decided to slice it at 4.13.1 to make sure there was nothing wrong with the file, or the printer, or the SD card. So I did the same thing, it's in the corner, and here's the result. It looks pretty good. There's a little bit of waviness, but it's pretty good. Next, I figure I'd try this end cap that's for my electronic leveler. It's the one that I use to level the beds. So I wanted to print that and see how that turned out. Well, I used a random seam, and look at these bumps are all over the place and huge. So I went back and printed the chep cube again and focused in on what it was doing in that corner. And if you look, Every layer pauses and just spits out plastic at that point. Just stops and spits out plastic. So I'm like, why is it doing this? So I checked the G codes, trying to compare, find something. There was nothing obviously there. So then I said, maybe it's something in the profiles. So I checked the profiles, they were identical. Then I remembered. The Ender 2 Pro has the resume printing feature. Could that be it? At the end of every layer, it writes to the SD card what layer it was on in case power was cut off, it knows where to restart. Now fortunately, in the Ender 2 Pro LCD, you can go to the configuration menu and actually shut that off. So just click on it and shut it off. Now we can run the print again and see if it's any different. Here's the same file sliced in version 5.0 and you notice when it gets to the corner, it doesn't pause anymore. It just lifts, goes to the corner and starts printing. So that extra flow, that 5.0 was capable of was showing that extra blob in the corner that's no longer there when that is shut off. So I decided to do this again, but with version 4.13.1, and you can see it's there, but not nearly as big because version 5.0, because it adjusts the flow, also creates more pressure in the nozzle, which oozed out when this thing paused. So that variable flow that adjusts these walls was helpful here, but for other cases around corners, I may have to adjust my profile to account for that. Version 5.0 is still a beta, which means it's got some bugs to work out, and we're gonna have to adjust our profiles to work with these new features, but I'm looking forward to what this thing can do. If you wanna try it, I'll put a link to it in the description below. If you're like me and you create electronics, you're gonna need circuit boards. So if you're looking for a circuit board, PCBWay.com is a great place to get low-cost circuit boards, but you can also get assembly services. You can supply them the parts or give them a bill of material with the parts list. They will track down the parts, solder things together, review it with you during the process, and at the end ship you completely assembled boards. So if you're looking for a manufacturing partner for your electronics designs, check out PCBWay.com. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, click on that Patreon logo. And if nothing else, click on that Film of Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time, right here at Film of Friday.